So I'm going to work on this painting again and um, this part of the process requires me to go inside a little bit so I'll be adding a few little bits and pieces whenever I think about um, things that I want to share but for the most part I'll probably be have my back to you throwing paint at stuff. So I'm just going to go in now and put some shadows at the base of the waves in the whitewash and um, that's the uh, colour that I use in my colour recipe book if you haven't got it get it um, and it's uh, phthalo blue burnt umber and white and I'm putting it in now because there'll be other colours that go over the top of it um, but it's uh, it kind of gives the picture a little bit more solidity. Sort of gives the wave a bit of a bit of volume. So I want this water to be crystal clear and one of the best ways of, of making the water clear is to um, make the bottom of the water or the, the whatever the water is sitting on really really clear and waves generally uh, cast a shadow so if you put that shadow on the bottom and you render it reasonably strongly with the right color it'll make the water look like it's transparent and you'll be able to see sort of the shadow on the bottom so I'll do that in put that in now and again, that's just another little bit of structure that adds to the depth and the dimension. Breaking that line up a little bit because I want the water to be a bit choppy. So if you break up the line it means that the surface of the water or the face of the wave is casting a broken sort of shadow and that broken brush mark makes that illusion a little more powerful. So I'm just going to come out of the, the shadows here in the whitewash and I'm going to come out with a sort of an intermediate colour and I've got that color that I used in here with the shadows before and I've added more French ultramarine blue and white and the reason I've added French ultramarine blue because it's a warmer color and it's going to suggest that the sky is more reflected in the the whitewash and then eventually I'll come back and put more layers over the top of that but this is a really nice combination just to kind of build the depth in the whitewash it's one of the good things about having a ratty brush if you 
have a ratty old brush and you kind of mix up your brush strokes like that it will actually create the illusion of that broken suds that process now. So more white and more French ultramarine. Before I go any further, I'm going to do this part because otherwise my hand will go in there later. It's funny all these little things that you do sometimes unconsciously, you know, you work on a different picture and, or a different part of the picture and you're not quite sure why you do and if you think about it, sometimes there's no good reason, <laughs> but other times you discover that you're smarter than you think you are. So the paint I'm using here is Atelier Interactive because I'm, I'm doing a bit of blending through here and I know that this will stay wet enough for me to come back and blend those colours together. Um, but I've gone down in brush size um, and I've put a blob of um, white Interactive in here so that I have to keep going back to the palette. And I've just basically settled myself in now for a lot of this. <laughs> um, this won't be the finished version of it. I'm just getting most of it done because, done because I'm going to come back and paint suds in and there'll be a bit more water done over the top of this. And so at some stage I'll have to re-establish this white again and probably some other bits. So no point in doing something too many times if you don't have to. Actually do that one. I love watching waves. If you look at the way a wave breaks and you can learn so much about the movement of water and if I drop that back that way it looks makes the wave more gentle. But if I do see this gentle one as well. Anyway, I'll show you a steeper one later. I like the way the wave curls over and I've seen an opportunity to do that there so I'll come back to that later and do that. A 
you keep the paint quite thick and just use the tip of the brush without too much power you can actually get the brush to make that kind of broken up effect. So I've got that same white, lots of hairs, <laughs> I've got a very dry brush here and I'm just going to reflect the whitewash strategically here and there and you'll notice I'm stopping it on the back of the wave in front there, like that. And that should then start to create the impression of there being little planes. I know I've said before that we're lying things down and standing things up. So by reflecting the sky or what's behind a wave, we're flattening things. And by not reflecting them, we're creating these planes of the faces of the waves. Some of these marks on here you can see are just chalk marks and they'll just get lost in the process of the painting. Hopefully that should start to getting some lovely dimension in there now. And this is such a lovely little trick because it creates the impression of the sand being wet and shiny. You know, I talk about the painting process, but sometimes there's no real process. I mean, it sort of is, but sometimes it's just this kind of a meander over a canvas. <laughs> there's not really a process per se. It's just, you kind of get pulled around by the painting. Okay, because one of the strategies I use to create the illusion of um, the surface of the water being reflective is this process of using a, a dry brush down as I've done here and a wet brush across and this wet brush across now I've thinned the, the paint out quite a bit because I wanted a little bit transparent but if I do this on the face of the wave in the reflections it sort of gives that impression then of chop and
and the broken surface of the water where the tops of the waves are. But by thinning it out, I'm kind of um, building it up slowly. And this, you should be able to start seeing the, the planes being defined more now. You know, the flat areas of the wave and the, the steeper areas and the backs of the wave should be starting to become more defined. Now I'm gonna come back in a minute with free flow. And because the free flow covers so well, and it's such a stark white, I'm doing this um, part now with the white quite thin, so a lot of that will disappear, but <clears throat> because the next part of the white is so strong, I don't really want to overdo the white, so it, it'll be nice that this dries back a little bit. Fainter. So I've changed now to uh, free flow, which has um, got this lovely, lovely pigment loading. So the white doesn't become tra too transparent when you, uh, or translucent when you, transparent, translucent, hey. too thin, <laughs> when you uh, start uh, thinning it out with water a little bit um, and it travels so really well. So it's great for all of this stuff. So I'm just going to get in there now and get some suds in there like that. And using these flats like this are great because you can um, change the angle of the brush and make different size marks, which is great. I'm going to put, do this one out here. So I want this wave to look as though it's traveled a fair way. Now if this was sort of very deep water coming into very shallow water we would define this area here where the waves are breaking much more but the way we've got it we've got the wave kind of um, gently coming into the beach so no great big waves Usually you'll find too if these waves are quite are breaking quite powerfully you'll see a lot of sand stirred up in the in this sudsy area where the waves picked up sand off the bottom. And I'm just going to while I've got this just define the top of those waves a little bit 
Um, I'm doing this now because the amount of paint that I had in my brush has diminished. So I know that the mark that I'm going to make here is not too strong. So I can get away with going onto the back of that wave there a bit. <laughs> make the waves a little bit bigger than I need to at first because I know that when I come back and do this little bit of white on the tops of the backs of them that the wave comes down a little bit. Deeper waves out the back here, just to give them a bit more height. So I want to put a little bit more detail in the water here and, and especially up into the distance. So I've just got a very dry brush and I've got some French ultramarine blue and white. And I'm just going to sort of hit the tops of the backs of these waves and with the very dry brush at the moment. I'll put some detail on it later. But just to give um, to get rid of some of the that lolly green colour and reflect a bit more sky and hopefully make the ocean look a little more natural. So I'm going back to that process of flattening parts of the water and by reflecting the sky and then letting other parts of the water stand up as a result of flattening other parts. <laughs> Thank you. 
One of the ways we can create the illusion of shallow water is in the faces of these waves, these little waves here, put some sand or, sorry, create the illusion of being able to look through the wave at some sand. And if I leave that there, that'll make it look as though it's a bit deeper there. So you only put this bit where the waves are really, where it's really shallow. Like there, because that's deeper, I'll leave that off. And this is sort of creating the impression of being able to see through the face of the wave at the sand in the water. I want that to be quite deep over there next to that rock. Okay, so I want the, this water to be a bit transparent here too, but I want it to be a bit deeper than there, so I put that than here. So I just put that colour there in the deeper water, in the face of the wave. And now I can... push it up a little bit out here. So I want to get a little bit of that lovely refraction in the water here. So I'm just going to get in here like that now and do this wobbly brush technique. <laughs> and I'll repeat this a lot of times in this area here just to kind of build it all up.
So I'm just going to settle into a, a lot more of this. Um, and for those of you who are interested, I've used all of the principles in here in my both my Water Fundamentals DVD and my Wave Fundamentals DVD, which sort of cover all the aspects of the substrate and the colour of the water, etc., etc. And that sort of breaks this all down. Um, I hope you liked it. I hope this was useful. Uh, if it was, make sure you like it. Um, subscribe, and if you want to, become a member.